the divine path. Come walk with me, the way that I go. The path to immortality is hard, and only a few find it. The rest await the great day when the wheels of the universe shall be stopped and the immortal sparks shall escape from the sheaths of substance. Woe to those who wait, for they must return again, unconscious and unknowing, to the seed ground of stars, and await a new beginning. Those who are saved by the light of the mystery which I have revealed to you, O Hermes, and which I now bid you to establish among men, shall return again to the Father who dwells in the white light, and shall deliver themselves up to the light and shall be absorbed into the light, and in the light they shall become powers in God. This is the way of good and is revealed only to them that have wisdom. Know that the soul must be cleansed of its darkness, so you may enter the portals of light. Let he who would be free from the bonds of darkness first divide the material from the immaterial, the fire from the earth, for know you that as earth descends to earth, so also fire ascends unto fire and becomes one with fire. He who knows the fire that is within himself shall ascend to the eternal fire and dwell in it eternally. This writings was taken from the Greek sacred creation story called the Piamander. Piamander means savior of men. Did you notice it said, shall return again to the father who dwells in the white light. Return. White light. When were you ever there with the father that dwells in white light? And where is that white light located? How do we get there? Well let's start when you were a baby. We all know it takes a woman and a man to make a baby. Doctors have been studying the birth of a child for some time now. They can't understand how a cell divides and goes through the process of creating a child. Well what is not seen is the work the sacred spirit of God does. Everything that is done in God's sanctuary, our Milky Way, is done by his sacred spirit. God calls it his son. And the son does everything for God. That holy force may be moving stars all over our galaxy while yet it is creating a baby in some lucky woman's womb. That holy force, feeds every created thing that God made come into being, like that baby, with a force called life. It is that force that animates you and gives you the ability to move, run, jump and live. If there is a microbe five miles deep in the earth it is that holy sacred force that's feeding it life, while at the same time it's feeding every star the force it takes to create planets and put life on that said planet. All the while it's doing that, it is moving stars to God's desired position in the curved arms of our galaxy. While it is doing that, it is wrapping the life force we breathe around the earth and making sure it stays there. It also helps us by making sure the earth produces food for us to eat. With the life we get from our mother earth, combined with what we eat, we are able to live on our planet and enjoy the vision we see because of God's glorious creation. The path that I walk, is to get to that white light where our Creator dwells in His temple of fire. I now again quote from the Greek sacred creation writing known as the Poimandras, notice please the path that I go. But at the end of the period the knot of destiny was untied by the will of God and the bond of all things was loosened. Then God spoke to the Holy Word within the soul of all things, saying, 
increase in increasing and multiply in multitudes, all you, my creatures and workmanships. Let him that is endued with mind know himself to be immortal and that the cause of death is the love of the body, and let him learn all things that are, for he who has recognized himself enters into the state of good. And when God had said this, Providence, with the aid of the seven governors and harmony, brought the sexes together, making the mixtures and establishing the generations, and all things were multiplied according to their kind. He who through the error of attachment loves his body, stayed wandering in darkness, sensible and suffering the things of death, but he who realizes that the body is but the tomb of his soul, rises to immortality. Then Hermes desired to know why men should be deprived of immortality for the sin of ignorance alone. The great dragon answered, to the ignorant the body is supreme and they are incapable of realizing the immortality that is within them. Knowing only the body which is subject to death, they believe in death because they worship that substance which is the cause and reality of death. Then Hermes asked how the righteous and wise pass to God, to which Poimandras replied, that which the word of God said, I say, because the father of all things consists of life and light, whereof man is made. If therefore, a man shall learn and understand the nature of life and light, then he shall pass into the eternity of life and light. Hermes next inquired about the road by which the wise attain to life eternal, and Poimandras continued, let the man endued with a mind, let him mark and consider, and learn of himself, and with the power of his mind divide himself from his not-self and become a servant of reality. Hermes asked if all men did not have minds, and the great dragon replied, Take heed what you say, for I am the mind, the eternal teacher. I am the father of the word, the redeemer of all men and in the nature of the wise the word takes flesh. By means of the word, the world is saved. I thought, the father of the word, the mind, come only to men that are holy and good, pure and merciful, and that live piously and religiously and my presence is an inspiration and a help to them, for when I come they immediately know all things and adore the Universal Father. Before such wise and philosophic ones die, they learn to renounce their senses, knowing that these are the enemies of their immortal souls. I will not permit the evil senses to control the bodies of those who love me, nor will I allow evil emotions and evil thoughts to enter them. I become as a porter or doorkeeper, and shut out evil, protecting the wise from their own lower nature. But to the wicked, the envious, and the covetous, I come not, for such cannot understand the mysteries of mind, therefore I am unwelcome. I leave them to the avenging demon that they are making in their own souls, for evil each day increases itself and torments man more sharply, and each evil deed adds to the evil deeds that are gone before until finally evil destroys itself. The punishment of desire is the agony of unfulfillment. Hermes bowed his head in thankfulness to the great dragon who had taught him so much, and begged to hear more concerning the ultimate of the human soul. Do you now realize that your human soul is a speck of the Son of God that he uses to do everything with? Yes it's the spirit side of the real you. 
It's that spirit force that leaves your body at death and if you walk the walk you will return to the white light. This is the end of part 1 on to part 2.